hey guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make the matching shorts for the top that we just made previously in our previous video so if you haven't yet checked out the top after this tutorial just rush to the top so that you can have a matching set so today we are going to learn how to make this crochet granny stitch shirt so this can be done in several colors so that you can achieve a striped design or uh, you can make it in a plain color in this tutorial i'll be using a plain color so that i don't get any confusion when it comes to the visuals of the of the tutorial i know um mixed colors can be a little bit confusing to look at changing colors every other row or every other two rows so this is how the shirt looks like very pretty very straightforward and it matches perfectly with our top that we did in our previous video which is this one so if you haven't yet checked it out at the end of this one just click on the video on the screen it will take you to this top so uh, the materials that you will need for this tutorial or for this project are a crochet hook the crochet hook that i'll be using is a four millimeter crochet hook four millimeter and uh, you also need a dunning needle to weave in your ends this is a must a measuring tape is a must because we're going to take a few measurements and then we're also going to need a pair of scissors now the yarn that we shall be using today is winter king which is a four ply acrylic yarn if you can access cotton go ahead and use it if you have any other yarn that's not cotton or acrylic and you want to give this a try you can literally make it with any of the yarn of your choice as long as you can follow the measurement instructions so let's get started so for this project i want to give you just one tip one one tip you're going to work your as you work your um what is it called the first triangle when we are working our granny stitch just put one inch just make sure two rows of the granny stitch equals one inch so you can see from one to two that space has a total of two rows the moment you get that for your project that means you have achieved the gauge or gauge of this pattern so two rows of the granny stitch equals one inch or four rows of the granny stitch equals two inches which is literally the same thing i've just doubled the figures so the moment you get that uh just try different swatches while working the granny stitch and the hook that gives you that measurement is the hook that you're going to use for this project you don't have to necessarily use a four millimeter yet your yarn is different and your tension is different and just use whatever hook that gives you that measurement and you'll be good to go so um let's get started i'll be using the sizing chart on the screen right now now that sizing chart uh we are only considering the hip measurement of this sizing chart so look at the hip measurement and see where you lie but whatever it is you don't have to follow the the sizing chart you can just take your hip circumference and then grab your hook and yarn and let's get started you're going to grab your yarn and your hook and you're going to make a slip knot so those who don't know how to make a slip knot you're going to just cross over like this so that your tail is on this side so we create that ribbon like shape and we are going to yarn over pull through and yarn over pull through and then pull on this tail now we're going to make a chain of five so one two three four and five so once you have your five chains you're going to go into the very first chain that you made with a double crochet so this one and you're going to make one double crochet into it and then make two more double crochets 
So that makes it a total of three double crochets. Like that. You have something that looks like this. And then you're going to make a chain of two and three more double crochets into the same exact chain. One, two, and three. So this is what you have. Now you're going to chain one and place one more double crochet into the same exact chain. So let's see what we have right now. We have the chain of four here. And then we have the three double crochets, the chain two, the three double crochets here. And then one more double crochet here. And now we have a chain one space at this point. But this side we have a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one, meaning that we've balanced both sides on this side and on this side. Let's go on to row two. This marks the end of row one. Row two is a chain of four. And the chain, the chain of four always counts as a double crochet chain one. Turn your work. When you turn your work, you're going to have a chain one space here. So you're going to go into it with three double crochets. And then you're going to chain one. This is a chain two space. And each chain two space gets a shell. A shell for this pattern is three double crochets, chain two and three more double crochets. So let's go ahead and do that. After your chain of one here, you're going to prepare for a double crochet and place a total of three double crochets into the chain two space. One, two, and three. Chain two, and three more double crochets into the chain two space. One, two, and three. So we've placed a shell into the chain two space. After this, you're going to chain one and place into the chain four space here, which counts as a double crochet chain one. You're going to go into that space here. After the three double crochets here, you're going to go into that space and place a total of three double crochets. One, two, and three. After your three double crochets, you're going to chain one and place one more double crochet into the same space. So we have balanced what's on this side onto what's on this side. So let's go on to row three. The row starts with a chain of four, which counts as a double crochet chain one. Turn your work into the very first chain one space, which is this one. You're placing three double crochets. And then you're going to chain one. This is a chain one space. Each chain one space gets three double crochets, unless stated otherwise. Because there are some parts of this pattern that you get to and these um, instructions don't apply to it. So after your three double crochets here, you're going to chain one. And into the chain two space, which is the tip of the triangle, you can see the triangular shape. Into the tip of the triangle, you're going to place a shell. So into the chain two space. So a shell is three double crochets. Chain two and three more double crochets. So after this, you're going to chain one. Each chain one space gets three double crochets. So go into the next chain one space with three double crochets. Chain one. Into the last chain four space, we place three double crochets. Chain one. And one more double crochet into the same space, just to balance what we had at the beginning of the row. Remember, we start with a chain of four. So if we place one chain and one double crochet, that counts as one double crochet chain one. And the chain of four also counts as a double crochet chain one. So that's why we end our row like this. I hope everything makes sense at this point. 
if you're getting value from this video and if you're liking how your project is coming together make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel so let's go on to row four row four is going to start just as usual as the other rows so you're going to make a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work into the first chain one space you're going to place three double crochets like that after this you're going to chain one go into the next chain one space with three double crochets chain one go into the next chain one space which is this one with three double crochets chain one this is a chain two space and it's the top of the triangle so you place a shell there so three double crochets chain two and then three more double crochets into the same space and after this we're just going to mirror exactly what we have on this side so chain one go into the next chain one space which is this one and place three double crochets chain one go into the next chain one space with three double crochets and after this you're going to chain one and into the chain four space which is this one after the three double crochets here you're going to go in there with three double crochets and since this is the end of the row i told you after your three double crochets you will chain one and then go into the same space with one more double crochet to balance what we have at the beginning of the row so look what we have if you're a bit lost and maybe your work is not balancing out you can count the number of um, groups of double crochets the groups of three double crochets that you have on each side they should be the same so for example we have one two three and four and then on this side this is the exact middle of the triangle so on this side we also have one two three and four so if you have the same number that means the triangle is building up um in a balanced way so let's go on to row five we are basically doing the same exact thing so i'll speed through this one chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one and then into the first chain one space you're going to place three double crochets this is the last row of demonstration so chain one go into the next chain one space with three double crochets chain one go into the next chain one space with three double crochets chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space now we've reached the chain two space you can see the next space is a chain two space so you're going to chain one and go into that chain two space with a shell which is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same space now once you're done with this you're going to just go all the way down doing the same exact thing uh, just mirror what you have on this side so chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one and into the chain um the chain four space after the three double crochets you're going to place three double crochets chain one and one more double crochet into the same space to balance what we started with at the beginning of the row so this is what your work should look like at this point 
All right, so you're going to continue working this row. As you can see, I've gone ahead to work some more rows, just placing three double crochets in each and every chain one space and a shell in each and every chain two space at the tip of the triangle. And then when it comes to the beginning and the end, we do the same exact thing. So I'm still going on creating my triangular shape while making it bigger. So we're going to continue to build onto our triangle until the base of our triangle is half of our hip measurement when stretched. So you can see this, I'm chaining four and going into the very first chain one space with three double crochets. And the moment you're done with this, you just chain one and then three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, three double crochets into the next and so on and so forth. Um, what we did for the previous rows is going to be the same exact thing that we do for this one. So let me go off camera and I'll meet you guys back and I'll let you know how many rows that I'll have done for my first panel of the shirt. This can either be the front or the back piece. So they're going to be two identical pieces. All right, guys, um, I've made a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 rows. And when I stretch the base of my panel or of my triangle, it goes all the way to 20 inches. When stretched, not fully stretched because we want something comfortable at the same time. So when I stretch it, it goes to 20, but if not stretched, it goes to 18 inches. So uh, just do what's suitable for your body size or your body measurements. Um, I would usually prefer if you're not stretching it, you go up to two inches less than your hip measurement. So for me, I have a total of 18, but when I stretch the base of my triangle, it goes all the way to 20 inches and I told you at the beginning, I'll be considering a hip size of 40 inches. All right, guys, um, once you get your hip measurement at the base of your triangle, we're going to start doing something different. We're going to start considering a different measurement, which is the round fly. What I usually do for different sizes, I usually consider 24 inches for XXS, then uh, 26 inches for small, 28 inches for medium and 30 inches for large, extra large. So the round fly that I'm talking about is this one in the exact middle of the shirt. Since this is a size medium, which is um, measurement 40 inches, I told you I usually consider 26 to 28 inches for the round fly of a medium shirt. So this is what I'm talking about from the tip of the triangle all the way down, but we are going to need to stretch it. And you can see this goes to 24 and that means uh, we are not yet halfway of the round fly because this is one of the panels for the shorts and we need this measurement to be halfway of the round fly. So if I'm considering 28, I need another two inches in order to get to 14 inches. So that 14 times two is 28. So for the larger sizes, you're going to consider 30 inches. If you are small, then you're going to consider 26 inches because these shirts are going to be high waisted. And also you have to consider that you have to get a waistband. So I'm going to take off one inch for the waistband. So if this is up to 12, one inch for the waistband, which will be up to 13. And then I'm going to just add one more inch to get to my round fly because the waistband has to be placed on the shirt. Now, uh, the fact that we've already gotten the hip width, half of our hip width, uh, we're going to stop increasing towards this side and we're going to do something different. So instead of starting with a chain of four this time, you're going to make a chain of three. And then you're going to go into the next chain one space. So what that is going to create is uh, we're going to start making this side flat. As you can see, the effect has already been uh, demonstrated. Instead of going this side, we're now going flat. 
So you're going to just continue with a chain of one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and you're going to repeat that all the way up to this point where you will place a shell as usual. This doesn't change until you get to this point and I'll show you how to wind up your row. So we're coming to the end of our row and we've placed three double crochets in the very last chain one space. Now we are not going to chain one after this. You're going to just go directly into the chain four space and you're going to place one double crochet there. And that's how we wind up our row. And you can see this is also making the side flat. So the fact that I needed only one inch, as as you saw on the measuring tip, we stopped on 12, then the 13th inch, which is a difference of one inch, is for the waistband. And I need a total of 14. I'm going to do a total of around two rows to get to my 14 inches that I want. So I'm going to just repeat this same exact row. You're going to make a chain of three, turn your work, skip over the next three double crochets and go into the chain one space with a total of three double crochets. Like that. And then you're going to go all the way across And you can see the shape of our triangle is changing into something different. It's no longer like sharp corners. So you're going to go all the way up. And then when you get to this point, I'll show you how to wind up your row. So we're coming to the end of our row and I'm placing three double crochets in the very last chain one space. And you're going to directly prepare for a double crochet and go into the chain three space with one double crochet. So let's see what we have at the moment. You're going to get your measuring tip. And remember our goal was to get 14 inches, which is half of our round fly measurement minus one inch for the waistband. So, we have this 10 inches when it's not stretched. That means this is still very short. And uh, when you stretch it, it should get to 13 inches. And this is what we have. So that means this shirt is going to comfortably fit. So just translate these measurements into your crochet piece and make sure you get them right. I'll be leaving all the things on the screen, the things that you have to follow, the measurements and all that. So um, after this, you're going to make an identical piece. So I have mine ready here. You're going to just make an identical piece. And make sure the same number of rows, the same number of stitches, same everything. So that you have two pieces that look exactly the same. So the moment you're done with this one, you're going to grab your second one. And we are going to join the sides together. So just make sure your work is on the wrong side. Identify the wrong side of your work. And make sure the right sides are facing inward so that you're working this joining seam on this side. Whatever number of rows that you've done to get your round fly measurement, you're going to just chain one and stitch the two pieces together, placing two single crochets into each and every row to join the pieces together. Do what you have to do to join these two panels together. And after this, you're going to chain one, cut your yarn, and then you're going to go to this side as well and do the same exact thing. I have so many tails on this side, but we are just placing two single crochets into each and every row. Just do what's best for you, what suits you best. You can use a darning needle to join the sides together, or you can use your crochet hook. 
doesn't really matter. As long as you align your work perfectly well. So after this, you're going to chain one. And you're going to cut your yarn. Okay, at this point, let me just tie these loose ends together so that I can get rid of them. You can just weave them in using the turning needle, but I'm not going to do that because uh, I just like tying my knots together if they are closer to each other. All right, so we're going to have something that looks like this. I know it looks weird right now, but we are going to balance it out and get a pair of shorts. So now that all our measurements are in place, we have half of our hip measurement here. We have the round fly sorted. Now you are going to get your yarn and you're going to attach it. You can turn your work onto the right side and you can see what the right side looks like. So uh, we're going to first work one side of the shirt and we're going to go into the chain two space of this triangle and the chain two space of the opposite triangle. And we're going to attach our yarn. At this point, we have joined the middle section of the shirts and created two leg holes, as you can see. Now we're going to start evening out our, our pair of shorts because we don't want them to be in this shape. They have to create coverage. So uh, you're going to make a chain of three and working on one panel, you're going to go into the next chain one space and place, actually, let me first work on this side because that way I'll be working in the opposite direction of the previous row. As you can see, the last row is facing this side. So I'm trying to work in the opposite direction of the previous row so that we don't distort the flow of the pattern. So you're going to go into the next chain one space with three double crochets. And then continue chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one. And repeat that until you get to this point where we join the two panels together. And I'll show you what to do at this point. So we're almost getting to that spot where we joined the two panels together, as you can see here. Now we're going to go directly into the next chain one space. So we're going to skip over this part where we joined the two panels together and go into the next chain one space on the opposite side. And we're going to place three double crochets into the chain one space. This will create something quite big. We can always sim it up a bit later on when we are finalizing our shirt, but this is what you'll have. And we're going to just continue to chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. And repeat that all the way to the beginning of our row, which is in the exact middle of our, 
of the shirts where the legs split. So we're almost coming to the end and I'm placing three double crochets into the very last um, chain one space right before the chain two space in the middle of the triangle. Now after this you're not going to chain one, you're going to just go on and go into the chain two space which is the tip of the triangle and you're going to place one double crochet. So this is what you'll have. And you can notice that your work has started creating coverage towards one side of the shot. So let's go ahead and repeat that row and see um, what happens when we keep doing that again and again. So chain three, I'm going to demonstrate this one more time so that you get it right. Chain three and turn your work. And then you're going to skip the next three double crochets and go into the next chain one space. Remember, I told you our goal is to level up our shirts. Uh, this design doesn't really have um, it doesn't really have length to it. It's right below the butt where the legs split. So we are not going to create coverage downwards. Uh, if you would want me to make a tutorial for you guys that. Um, makes the legs longer up to the feet. Just let me know down in the comment section. I can do that tutorial for you guys. So we are placing one, uh, three double crochets in each chain one space until we get to the side of the shirt. So once you get to the side of the shirt here, remember this is the exact middle. So after your three double crochets in this space, you're going to just cross over. You don't chain one. Cross over to the next chain one space on the opposite side and place three double crochets. And this is what is going to be created. So after this, you're going to chain one and three double crochets in the next chain one space. So go all the way across until towards the end of the row and I'll show you how to wind up. So we're coming towards the end of the row and I've placed my three double crochets in the very last chain one space. I'm going to prepare for a double crochet and directly go into the chain three space and place a double crochet there. So you can see what this is creating. It's creating... um what can I say? It's creating our leg holes. We are leveling 
the sides of our shots. As you can see, we are creating more coverage. But in the process of creating the coverage towards the side, we are closing up. We are ending our, what can I say? We are closing up the base of our shot as well. So as you continue to work this row, it's going to come and create coverage all the way to this side so that we have a box shape. And then we shall close up this part later on just a bit so that we get a comfortable crotch area so that it's not like as pointed as this. So just go ahead and keep repeating this row again and again, and you will notice that your shorts are evening out to meet at a specific point somewhere around here, because this is coming like this, and this is dropping down. And another thing that you'll notice is that your rows will get shorter and shorter. So as you work, you'll notice that it takes a shorter time to work the very last rows because we are creating decreases in some way or another. So just keep repeating that row. Chain three, turn, and keep working that row back and forth, back and forth until you're almost out of stitches. And I'll meet you back at that point. All right, guys, this is what I was talking about. As you continue to do the same exact row, look at how short the row looks like right now. And uh, you can see, let me put it like this. This is the lower opening of the leg hole. And this is the waistline of the shirt. So as you continue to work your rows, they'll get shorter and shorter. And that means we shall end up finishing faster. So look what we have left. We are still evening it out so that we get to a point somewhere around here so that it's a perfect box. If you want this little, this can also be a very cute design for your shirt, that little split. I think you can leave it behind. So let me just go ahead and work one more row. I'll have a little split on the side. So you can see what the middle looks like, the side of the shirt. You remember that line? This is what it looks like. All right, so if you want the little split on the side, this is what you'll get. You can stop somewhere around three rows in, or you can decide to finish up your shirts as usual. But uh, for me, I'm going to demonstrate up to when you have a full closure for your shirt. And then you can customize it the way you want. Now, I'm on this row where I have to place only three double crochets in the next chain one space, then cross over to the other side and go into the chain one space with three double crochets and then one double crochet in the chain three space. So this is the second last row. Now for the very last row, you're going to chain three, turn your work and then slip stitch into the chain three space. And this will be the end of 
one side of our shirt pull through and this is what you'll have guys do you see this this is the side of the shirt and you can see what that has created we have created the very first side of the leg hole and this part is going to seem a little bit stiff don't worry about that because it has to grab the lower part of the butt so that we don't have shirts that are opened up like this since uh, these ones are stopping right below the butt so if you feel any stiffness when it comes to this part just leave it there it will be very comfortable when you wear it so we're going to attach our yarn on the opposite side and do the same exact thing we're going to literally have a rectangular shape after evening out this side as well so right now we have some sort of like pentagon shape and we want a rectangular shape that means we are going to even out this part as well just like we've done for this one so you're going to grab your yarn and you're going to attach it in in the chain to space in the middle of the split of the leg and making sure you've attached it to the panel whereby you're working in the opposite direction of the previous row so this row here this side and you're going to make a chain of three so we have just gone back to the same exact process skip over the three double crochets and then three double crochets into the next so we are going to just even out the same exact way as the first side so just rewind your video to when we started working the very first leg extension and do the same exact process and i'll meet you guys back when i have both sides of my shirts ready this may seem like a rectangle but it's a leg hole as you can see here so that means you're going to wear your shirt from here and put one leg here and the second leg here so that's ideally what it's supposed to be like and then we shall create the waistband later on so let's first finish up the leg holes and come back to create the waistband and everything else all right guys we are back and i am done with both sides as you can see we have a rectangular shape and uh, these are our leg holes you can see this this is our first leg hole and this is our second leg hole so the fact that there is some stiffness when it comes to the very uh best boundary of the shirts i'm not going to close up any more rows here in the middle if you want to do that you can close them up but make sure you don't tamper with the comfortable fitting of the shirts this is what your shirts will look like these are the leg holes now we're going to start working on the waistband of our shorts um you're going to grab your yarn and we're going to go all the way around the waistband the waist opening that big opening and we're going to attach our yarn in the middle here and we're going to make a chain of three now we're going to start placing two double crochets into each and every double crochet space or each and every row so go into each and every row with a total of two double crochets only we also want to bring in the waistband a bit because it's kind of very wide so that's why i'm placing only two double crochets into each and every row as you can see here so continue to do that all the way around i'll meet you guys back when we are back to this part so you're going to go all the way around until you get back to the beginning of the round all right guys we've made it all the way around and i'm placing my very last two double crochets into the very last row and after this, I'm going to go on top of the first chain three and place a slip stitch. 
And that marks the end of round one of the waistband. Now on to round two, we're going to make a chain of three, which counts as a double crochet. And now we're going to make a front post double crochet into the next double crochet. So you go behind the post of the crochet stitch and push it up and work a double crochet as usual. And then you're going to make a back post double crochet into the next stitch. So front post, back post. And you can see the front post pushes the stitch to the front and the back post pushes it to the back. Alternating between these two stitches is going to create a ribbed effect eventually for our waistband, which will look very beautiful and well finished. As you can see here, you can see the ridges starting to free, to create themselves. So just go all the way around, alternating between the front post double crochet, which is this one, and then the back post double crochet. Go all the way around until the beginning of the round, and I'll meet you back at this point. So I've come to the end of my row two or round two of the waistband, and I've ended with a front post double crochet. As you can see here, I've ended with a front post, and I'm going to go on top of the first chain three of the round and place a slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain three, and this is going to be my very last round of the waistband. I'm going to place a front post double crochet in each front post. So this is a front post because the stitch is popped on the out, on the upward side. So I'm going to go in it with a front post and into the back post, I'll place a back post. So that will keep the ridges in one straight line. So just keep working one front post double crochet in each front post and one back post in each back post and keep alternating between the two stitches all the way around. So as I said, this is going to be my very last round. So the moment I'm done with this, I'll just slip stitch in the top of the very first stitch, chain one and cut my yarn. So let me go off camera and I work this round and I'll show you what will come out of it. All right, guys, so here we are with our pair of shirts. We are done with the waistband and I decided to go all the way down and do the same exact ribbing for the leg holes just to give them some more length so that it doesn't look like a skirt as um, a flat surface at the base. So this helps us split the leg holes. As you can see here, we have the same thing going on, the same ribbing going on on the waistband. So uh, you're going to go ahead and make a long chain, and this is going to act as a drawstring for our waistline or for the waistband. And we're going to weave it into, you're going to identify the front side of your shirt. I think I'll take this as the front side. It looks neater than the other side, but both sides should literally look the, look the same. The only reason why I've chosen this side is because it doesn't have loose ends laying around. So you're going to go in and out of every two stitches in the middle row of the, of the waistband. Remember we have a total of three rows or three rounds for the waistband. So you're going to go in and out of every two stitches, starting from the exact middle of the shirt all the way around until you come back to this point. So just watch what I'm doing. Two, two stitches in and out.
You can also use your darning needle to do this if you find the crochet hook a little bit inconveniencing. And you have to make sure if you're using a crochet hook, you make sure you don't pull on the stitches that are already worked. You have to be very careful while using this method. Okay guys, so here we are. Uh, we've made it all the way around and the drawstring helps us to adjust the waistband to whatever size that is convenient for our model or whoever is going to wear these shorts. So uh, you can either adjust it to become smaller or you can open it up to become bigger in case your waist is a bigger size. So these strings, you're going to just make a knot like this. And you can go ahead to attach some accessories. Maybe they can be tassels or beads or whatever you wish to put. You can put shells. I think shells would be very cute on this. And that's it for today's video, guys. Uh, this is how the back of the shirt looks like. You're going to grab your darning needle and weave in all your ends. And I will see you in my next video. Make sure I give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can give it a try. And let me know down in the comment section how you found this tutorial. And I'll see you in my next one. I don't know what it will be this time, but I will probably see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.